Oh, so I, I'm in trying. Okay. Welcome everyone to the book club, the Science of Getting Rich book club with the amazing Lisa Marie. I'm so excited to be here. I know all of you will you gain so much value from this, this uh, all of these calls. And today we're going through chapter 13. Is that correct? Yes. I think so. And I'm so excited for it. Uh, this book has changed my life and I know all of we are studying it here. So Hearing everyone's view on it will um, give you so much uh, value from that. Um, make sure that you uh, have yourself muted so that we can listen to Lisa Marie and get all the value. Also, make sure that you have pen and paper ready if you need to write something down or if you have questions or anything like that. With that being said, I will pass it back to you, Lisa Marie. Thank you, Nicholas. I am super excited to be here. Um, this book is doing so much for me. I feel confident in what I'm learning. And can I, you mute me, please? I can't see the buttons down here. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely, Nicholas. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Nope, you got it. Okay. Um, I am starting to feel so confident about this book there are still areas where i'm a little gray where you know the fuzzies and there is a little part even in chapter 13 which is getting into the right business um that i'm just just not quite sure but we're going to work through it this is why we do the book club to get other interpretations other perceptions and then we can form and choose our own Okay, so if we start out with chapter 13, in order to be successful in any business, it depends on how developed we are with the tools that are needed or required for that business. Okay, um, now learning a trade or a service, it would be quite difficult, I'm sure you could agree, if it were not something that you enjoy doing. If you're stuck in a job that you despise, you know, you hate, you want to be enjoying, you want to love what you are doing, you want to be passionate about it, you want, you want to feel that, that faith and purpose in what you want to accomplish, your end goal. What is that end goal? And we got to remember to hold that vision always close to us. And when things are failing, just remember, fall back on gratitude. Fall back on gratitude and that will see you through. I promise you it will because it does me. And I really used to have such a negative negative attitude you know just i don't know just negative you know and i would um i would front off people like you know how do you know that or you know what i mean it's just not the way to carry on in life it's, it's not but um if if we have the correct faculties, and in this book, faculties refers to the tools that are needed for that particular business. Um, them Lisa, can I just interrupt you for a second? Somebody needs to mute because okay. it keeps taking the camera off of you. Oh, I see it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. All right, everybody good now? Is that sound okay? Okay, everybody will have a chance to speak. Don't worry, you'll have your um, your time for sure. Okay, um, it is. Let's see, where was I now? Um, okay, we need the right tools. Okay, in the book, faculties. When they're talking faculties, they are referring to the tools, whether that would be physical tools that you need or whether that is mental faculties, mental tools that you need in order to succeed. So for instance, um, it, you can't be, you, I'm sorry, you wouldn't be able to succeed very well as a music teacher, um, 
if you didn't have the right tools to be able to conduct the the lessons, you know, the the having people learn, you wouldn't have the right tools, you wouldn't be able to play uh, instrument, you wouldn't be able to, if it's singing or the guitar or the piano, if you did not have those tools and know how to use them properly, then there is no guarantee of success, okay? So we have to, if, if that is the case, say, say that we are in a business that we despise or we just do not like. And, and obviously, it's going to feel like a job then, is it not? We need to concentrate on getting into something that we love. Okay, if, if you know what you love to do and you can do it, you know, it's so much passion and so much um um, faith and purpose and you know and you never take your your mind off that end goal you never do that you always stay full of faith and purpose right and then um even though we don't know how to use the tools possibly associated with the business that we want to do we can learn that we can learn anything we can develop any we can develop any talent that we choose to. When I go back to Robert's um, analogy of this chapter, and it, I just love his analogy on every single chapter, he says, um, we have to, okay, figure out what you love to do and then try to figure out a business for that instead of the other way around. You know what I mean? So if we could find something that we absolutely love, absolutely have passion about and, and the faith and purpose and knowing wherever we are in our present state, we can use that as a stepping stool to get to the next level. So we can't always cut off things opportunities um, too quickly, but we have to keep in mind, we don't want to accept any opportunity if we have one single ounce of doubt or fear or just, if, if you don't feel like that's your passion and you love it, then stay, don't be too hasty to jump into a different opportunity okay especially if you are in doubt about anything you just keep your present place continue to do the best that you can do every single day without hurrying through it so it is done effectively you know what i mean then that will serve as a stepping stone to your next step we have to grow as a person in order to get that step. We can't take people where we have never been. Okay. Um, just because we have the right tools, let's just say we are in a business and we do have the right tools. We know how to use them. Okay. That doesn't necessarily assure success either. There are so many different variables that we have to remember. And if we get off track, just we need, and, and you're going to, this is not a smooth journey. It, you know, like Robert says, follow the hero's journey. Follow the hero's journey. And, and he described it with, uh, he had the story about Bruce Lee, you know, he didn't name Bruce Lee right away, but he talked about him hopping on a freight freight ship and cruise to America. God knows how he knew this, but he knew the best martial arts teacher was in L.A. or wherever it was. He hopped on a freight boat. 
and traveled for three and a half months to get to the United States, got a job as a busboy, and he was the happiest clam on earth. He was just always so happy and on top of the world. And every time during break, he'd run out into the to the alley and he'd be exercising. He'd be jumping and kicking and doing all this stuff every spare second he got. That shows passion and purpose and that he he wanted that with every fiber of his being and he was going to do anything he could to get it. And he did. And he did. And we know him today as fiercely. I think that is just a, a really cool story. Um, yeah. So anyway, that is my version. I do. I do want to open this up and get some other opinions. If that doesn't go too awfully long, I, I do have um, five questions that I want to just put out randomly and, and maybe we'll do that first and see if anybody can answer that. And if not, you want to speak your piece by all means. Okay. So, um, how much, and now, um, Ursula, welcome, by the way, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And, um, have you been following along with the book, Ursula? You may have to unmute her. Yeah, I'm asking. There we go. Uh oh, who do we lose, Deborah? Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's my first time joining. I've okay. been following you the first time on the on your Zoom. Okay, I appreciate you following me. Um, are you in the book club, Ursa? No, I'm not in this book okay. club. No. Well, you know what? If you enjoyed today, you are more than welcome to join. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You are more. We are in chapter 13, which is getting into the right business. Okay. okay. And I, we are just talking, you know, each of us giving our own value on the chapter. And if you don't feel comfortable speaking today, you are just fine. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to welcome you. Um, does anybody want to go first? Maybe if somebody speaks their mind, we're going to cover one of these questions. So, okay, Nicholas, you go, bud. Do I need to do that? Let me see if I can. There we go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to go first. Um, I always have something to say. Um, I wrote down some notes here, but when you were talking, um, you reminded me of something. And that was when I didn't know what I wanted, Melody was on here, helped me with that by asking me a couple of questions. The thing is, when I knew what I wanted, it was like a weight was lifted from my shoulder because then um, I knew what vehicle to use. And then um, I can't remember exactly what you said when you said something that made me think of this. So when we know what we want, we know what we, it's easier to figure out the way there. Well, it's kind of hard if we don't know what we want, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, the thing, my three takeaways from this, this chapter is, the first one is we just got to figure out what we want, find someone that has it and develop the right talent to get there. And uh, next I wrote down, it's easy to do what we already mastered or are really good at. However, if there is something else that we truly want, then th that will bring us the most satisfaction. And the last thing is, and um, Wallace Waters talks about this in this chapter is, the only reason to do something, well, th these are my own words, not Wallace Waters' words. The only reason to do something that we don't want to do even if we have the talents for it, is to get us to where we want to be, to get us to where we want to be, do or have in life. So my, my, my short takeaways, thank you. Can, can you mute me because I can't. <laughs> Sorry, Nicholas, I moved, muted you just a second too quick there. <laughs> Anywho, I love that. I love uh, number two, easy to do what you are good at. 
that that was a great point that I did not key in on. So thank you so much for that, Nicholas. That's that's amazing. Um, yeah, we we if if we want to get better at something that we really want to do, and we aren't born with that natural talent, then we we have. You, we can learn that we can learn whatever it is that we want to do and that gets you out of your comfort zone and what happens then is if you just keep pushing forward you are going to make groundbreaking i mean you are going to grow you are gonna grow and it's it, it may not just be in one area this book has helped me in so many areas of my life. And guess what, people? I still don't know what I want to do. <laughs> I don't. But I know that I have to know, I, I have to feel like I am on the right path. And, and I hold, you know, until something comes along that I absolutely cannot do without. You know what I mean? I absolutely, this is my stepping stone. So thank you, Nicholas. Anybody else? Melody. Yeah, wow, the screen was flashing for me to leave. Okay, so it is so good to be here. And thank you so much, Lisa, for doing this, this um, study on this book. You know, um, within the science of getting rich, there are, I mean, you guys all know, if you're reading the book and you're studying along, you know that the steps in it, the principles in it are not difficult. We just need to know what they are and practice them, you know, and as this chapter talks about, you know, getting into the right business, you know, it's, it's interesting because I just had a conversation with somebody and I, I'm just not as passionate about network marketing as you are melody and i said whoa 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 hold the phone here because i am not passionate about building a company i am passionate about giving people opportunity to change their life to to live the life that they've only dreamt of or maybe quit dreaming of so as this book says you know we can develop the talent maybe and each and every one of us or anybody who ever sees this call in the future has been born with gifts. Maybe your gift is cooking. And so what do you want to do? You want to cook for everybody you care about, right? You want to feed people. Maybe your gift is, is um, connecting with people. Maybe you have a, a, an easy, you know, it's super easy for people to connect with you because you're relatable. So using those gifts, you know, focusing on what those skills and talents and gifts that we have. And from there, just taking it and this book will help us give us the mental tools, right? The mental tools to do anything that we want anywhere, anywhere. If anybody else has achieved it, we can achieve it too. We just need to know how they did it, right? Learning to do the certain way. and. Um, so I, I love that. That was such a relief for me when I finally got that in this chapter. Now, um, and again, I love that you do these book clubs so we can discuss the information in the chapter. I highly encourage you guys rereading the chapters as we're going along. There's no point in getting on these calls. And I mean, you're stunting your own growth if you're not reading the, the chapter. And understanding the principles, you know, by the end of this call, these calls. So thank you, Lisa, for that. The other thing that really pops out for me um, in this chapter was um, to develop our, develop, mm, to develop ourself. Now, I want you to go back and I want you to think, I, I know you guys know the story of Henry Ford the story of Thomas Edison. They did not 
they were very, very, very successful. Yes, they failed many times on their way to success. Everybody just goes, oh, you know, he just instantly, Ford just instantly created this car manufacturing, right? And, um, and he was successful. What about all the things he wasn't successful at before? And here's a key with whether it be Thomas Edison, whether it be Henry Ford, whether it be Richard Branson, who just lifted a rocket, right, into space. Did Richard Branson know how to build a rocket? Thomas Edison was, wasn't educated. Henry Ford had no idea how to build cars. They surrounded themselves with people that had those skills that had that knowledge. And that's one of the reasons, and that's a big clue for everybody who's on this call, surround yourself with people who know more than you. Like if, if, if we walk into a room and we're the smartest person in that room, we're in the wrong room. Surrounding people that know more. And, you know, I can't, I can't, I know there was a specific conversation I had with Robert when I had this huge epiphany, this huge pop. Surround yourself with people that know more. You learn more from those people that know more. You will develop yourself more when you surround yourself with people like this. So when this person said, well, you, I'm just not passionate about network marketing. I'm not passionate about network marketing. I absolutely love residual income because it affords me to do what I love every day. It affords me to be able to contribute where I want to contribute. It affords me to live the life that I want to live, not have to answer to anybody, not have to ever work for anybody ever again. Like, I can never go back that way. I know too much to, to go backwards. So my passion is to help other people live their passions. And when we're connecting with people, and I remember this distinctively. I remember trying to sell people my idea, my opportunity based on my desires. When I started connecting with them and sharing with them based on what their desires were, it was a whole different ballgame. Whole different ballgame. So I hope that sticks with somebody today. And, and, and for those of you who are share, following Jenna, um, remember you are looking for what they want. You are a consultant, what they need, right? And um, that's where these mental tools are going to come in. Absolutely. And the last thing I want to make a, a point of is in this chapter, I believe it was this chapter, it talks about um, not being in a hurry. Now, sometimes life circumstances is like, well, but I need to make money now. I need to, I need to get rich now. It's when we get into that, that hurry up. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. It, it throws us into a competitive mind space, not um, a creative mind space. So be very, very cautious of that. When you're saying you need to hurry up. Remember, you are your only competition. The person you see in the mirror is your only competition. The urgency you create will be what you create. Create that urgency. Don't fall into that competitive mind space. That's all I got for this chapter. Love you guys. Melody, you, again, are absolutely amazing. I love you so much. You just bring so much value to these calls for me, for us, you bring so much value to our lives. I, yeah, I just want to squeeze you. <laughs> anyway, yes, um, it, it does say in the book, if we need to not hurry, like you said, there was key points there I didn't touch on. So thank you, Melody. Um, 
Yeah, I get, I overthink things too much. I'm learning. I'm a work in progress. I'm getting gooder and gooder. And I will continue to get gooder and gooder. I feel confident about that. And I am very confident about what I'm learning in this book. A confident enough, I would have never have done this before in a million years. <laughs> but You're I got amazing. Into- You're amazing, Lisa. You're awesome. Oh. And I love watching you grow. I just oh. absolutely, I it makes me thrive watching when you guys are taking what you're learning and applying it to your life and seeing those results that just pops me out of bed you know and and we do have to to take action we have to do things in order to get that experience in order to grow it's just a repetitive repetitive cycle we just gotta forever keep growing which brings me to one of my questions and uh, what is the cause of evolution? Does anybody want to tackle that? In your opinion, there's no, I don't, it doesn't matter, right? Wrong. What is your perception? What is evolution or what, um, I'm sorry, what is the cause of evolution? Okay, nobody want to take it. In, can in I my, can I give a hint? Can yeah. I give a hint? Okay, so I want you guys to think of the word evolution. The word it comes from the root evolve. That might give you a little hint there. Mm-hmm. I think, in my opinion, and you guys can have a different opinion. That is completely okay. Ursula um, answered down below. You need to read her answer. Who? Ursula did. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Oh, you got to look. Oh Thank my you, goodness! Ursula. Look at all this chatter in here. Growing, is it? Yes, absolutely, Ursula. That's an excellent answer. Growing is a learning process. Absolutely. I think I was going to say it is the continuous growth continuous if you are not growing you are dying we have to always be reaching for more thank you ursula for sharing that awesome see you know more than you think you do little lady (laughs) okay um how much should we try to do each day and why Now I'm looking at these messages. No, nobody wants to. I'm not going to tackle them all, you guys. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you what Robert just told? What Robert taught me Absolutely. from the very beginning: just do more than you did yesterday. Do better than you did yesterday. Always be doing more. If you hit this goal for this day, then tomorrow is a new day, a new goal. And even if you don't get it. Don't beat yourself up as long as you you did your best every single day without rushing through and doing things inefficiently or for the wrong motive. People think, you know, that motive, that motive is going to hold a lot of people back. We really have to think about where our motive is and where, you know, for what reasons are you doing that? In fact, I did miss one important key. Let me get back to that. Uh, the right motive is um, more life for all, less for none. Okay. Is that good enough, you guys? All right. Um, how can we make each act efficient? Nobody? By doing the best that we can with the capabilities that we have, we just, you don't rush through it and do it haphazardly. You take your time, you do it efficiently, you go as fast as you can efficiently. That's how I would answer that. Anybody else? Going the extra mile. 
Yep, going the extra mile. Going you the extra mile. Absolutely. Each and every day. Fine, where do you draw that fine line, Melody? Like going that extra mile and not rushing through inefficiently. Just keep practicing. I just keep doing more and more and until I... So, okay, let's use this in, as an example. I used to work 12, 14, 16 hours a day online. Okay, don't wish that for anybody. I was doing that to go the extra mile. And now I will say in the beginning, as you're learning these principles and as you're learning to build your business, whether you're building a business or not, you, these principles are going to help you in every area of your life. So when I would be spending all of that time on my, online, I was doing it in the name of going the extra mile. Now, I would do it until I, it was like I had an inner peace about when I could stop. Like I would, it, instead of saying, oh, well, I'm just going to spend 20 more minutes connecting with, I don't know, five more people or whatever. Instead of that, I would change my Thanks. I know a lot of you send me your numbers, your stats for your business. Um, so instead of looking at, oh, this many website hits, this many gifts, this many, you know, connections, I would go to till I until I found a diamond, until I found gold, until I found somebody. Maybe it was a, until I got somebody to go through the tour it could be different things you know so you have to think and you have to you have to we've talked about intention you know having the right having intentions set in place to keep us going forward I would literally write it in my calendar on my planner you know I maybe four people take the tour four more people take the tour or whatever that is you know, just Kaizen, consistently getting gooder and gooder by going the extra mile, practicing. Practice makes permanent. Mm -hmm. And I would just know, I would feel good within myself. Instead of those times where I know some of you are going to be able to relate to this, is instead of reaching out to people and not making those right connections or not finding the right people at the right time, we don't want them anyway. So instead of feeling bad about it, I would feel good when I did find the right person, when I did have somebody interested in what I was doing, when I did find, make a connection with somebody who was living in a life that they did not desire, that they felt like they were a victim to life. And I made a connection to give them hope, to be able to let them know, look, you have the power within you right now to change your results. Now, I, it, you know, I would change that intention. I would use these principles to manifest the right people and use that law of attraction that you know, we're all using it anyway. Some of us are attracting things we don't want in our life rather than what we do want, but we are all using the law of attraction. It's there mm -hmm. for everybody, every country, every, every religious belief, every ethnicity every um every social right status it's that we're all using it learning that okay and and becoming aware about this to be able to just realize that i am in control i am in control i have the power and if if i have the power then i can just keep practicing what I'm best at and keep thinking about, and this is one thing I believe that was in this chapter, Lisa, too, is sometimes, you know, um, Napoleon Hill was talking about, you know, maybe you're in a job, maybe you don't have an opportunity or a business or, or something that's going to get you out of the situation or the circumstances you're in. Uh, maybe you have a job, do your best in that job, apply these principles in that job mm -hmm. and the opportunities that, that the other things will come. 
learn to manifest, learn to use that law of attraction, learn to use, um, you know, bring abundance into mm-hmm. your life, you know, so we get so caught up with, well, I don't know, this is what I really want to do. Is it going to afford you to do the things that you love to do? Is it going to afford you to take a vacation when you want to take a vacation, not when your boss tells you you can take a vacation or when you save up enough money to take a vacation? Is it going to afford you to spend more time with your loved ones, no matter where they live? hmm you know, this is where I needed to shift my thinking. So I, I really hope that helps. Are you kidding? <laughs> Absolutely helps, Melody. You're amazing. Um, yeah. Does anybody else want to have anything to say? Go ahead. Nick. Oh, I'm sorry, Nicholas. Let me unmute you. Okay. Thank there you. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I had my hand up. I feel like Melody already, you know, summarized it all. But I thought of something when it comes to being efficient is being focused and not just, you know, um, you know, doing things that will help you be focused. For example, if you're doing your morning routine, uh, you know, turn off your computer, turn off your mobile phone, don't have it on. Uh, if you're working from your computer, turn off notifications on your phone uh, put it on silent mode if you're working from your phone turn off your computer you know so that you can be there focused there so um, that is what i wanted to add because i feel like we're not uh, i feel like that i wouldn't give it the 100 percent if i wasn't focused if i wasn't present so thank you that Mm, that was excellent. And, and Nicholas, you know, like, like you're saying, you need to stay focused, we need to get rid of the distractions, we need to turn off the noise. We need to set the intentions and know exactly what we're going to do. Have a plan, set those intentions, know what those actions are going to do. Because we learned in the last what, couple of weeks, in this book, in the last couple of chapters, if we don't take action, it doesn't matter how positive we are, it doesn't matter that, oh yes, I believe in the law of abundance, I believe in the law of attraction, and all of these, it doesn't matter what you believe, it doesn't matter what you, until you take action. Mm-hmm. And that's very important to get rid of the distractions and know what are those steps to get you to the next, your next goal. And if anybody needs help with that, reach out, really. Absolutely. Thank you, Melody. Thank you, Nicholas. You guys are amazing. Um, uh, Let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, in this chapter, what, what does it say about our vision? I think this is an important part, too, that we need to really... It needs to sink in, you know. Does anybody want to tackle that, Deborah? Do you have any ideas or Melody? Lisa, what, if, what about instead of if you guys don't know or you don't remember? I you now nobody expects you to memorize this uh, mm-hmm. and have this all learned and studied and and know it all. Um, think about the principles and what we've been learning so far within this book what do you remember what do you remember about vision or how important it is to have vision in this book just take a stab at it just just Mm -hmm. go there be bold yeah yeah just whatever you feel it does not have to be according to the i did say it that way but but honestly i am we are just looking for perceptions and that's what gets us to broaden our horizon i think so does anybody want to tackle that nicholas and did you still have your hand up i'm gonna i'm gonna do you anyway (laughs) thank you Uh, yeah you know yeah I, i liked what you said melody because i'm so focused on remembering the exact words from this chapter and answering from this chapter 
but I can talk about vision because when I when I hear vision, I I remember another chapter which I can't remember which one it is, where Wallace Waters talks about, you know, knowing what you want, having a detailed vision in your mind, you know, and holding it there as long as possible, and you know, visualizing it and meditating on it. Um, this is something we can do um, not only not only when we're sitting down like this and closing our eyes and just focus on it, but we can do it when we're meditating as well. It's part of meditation. So I guess that's what I got from, from, from vision. Lisa, darling, you're muted. Hey guys. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Nicholas. You, you are a blessing. I just love how much value you and Melody offer up every single week. You know, so this is not just me doing it. This is a group effort. You know, Dustin, he gives his input when he feels comfortable. Deborah does as well. I appreciate you all so much. Next week, we are doing chapter 14, the impression of increase. I think I think this chapter is, is turning into one of my favorites just because... Um, I had to learn some really tough lessons about this chapter specifically, and I needed to get that figured out. I'm still figuring it out. Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect by any means, but I, you know, a work in progress. We don't know what we don't know, right? And we can't beat ourselves up for that. That is not our fault. How do we know the things that we could be doing or be learning unless we are present? That's where that hero's journey, find somebody that inspires you. Find somebody that is doing exactly what you want to do. And they are documented. They are documented that what they are doing is absolutely working. Copy, mimic them, do exactly what they do. Okay. Anybody else, Melody? <laughs> Nothing? Okay. All right. I guess that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you next week. And um, I love you all. Okay. Bye, guys. I get stuck. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lisa. I get to see everyone.